Here at Astro World, the thrill has always been the attraction, looping you forward and backward in a matter of moments, rushing you through a maze of wooden mountains at gut-wrenching speed, and bouncing you down a raging river, water pouring over the sides of your eight-man raft. Meanwhile, Southern California's Disneyland and Florida's Walt Disney World have been the guardians of animated excitement. Drunken pirates singing and pillaging a Caribbean port town. Bears and other forest animals hooting and hollering in a down-home jamboree. And the presidents of the United States assembled and speaking to all who will listen. Five, four, we've gone for main engine start. But the same technology that created the space shuttle, put computers in our homes and aliens on television screens, is bringing three-dimensional animation to amusement centers outside the Disney family. Here at Astro World, it has come in the form of the Great Texas Longhorn Review. Welcome to the Great Texas Longhorn The production is the brainchild of Gary Goddard and Tony Christopher of Gary Goddard Productions. And of course, Astro World General Manager Lamar Parker had a lot to say about the final product. The purpose in this, this particular attraction is to broaden our appeal to the families. Uh, the new baby boom generation is being born today, and we want to recognize that. And this really appeals to the whole family. We had two or three ideas for them, but they were really strung out on this idea of having a kind of a Western review. So uh, we thought about it, and we started thinking of, about different characters and different things that could come together. So that's really what we put together, a Western review. And we knew we wanted a cast of animals uh, in the tradition of these kinds of shows. And so we sat down and said, well, we're going to be in Houston, Texas, so what kind of show should we do? And, well, it should be something about Texas. And, and one thing led to another, and storyboard sessions and gags and coming up with ideas and songs. And what came out of that was the Great Texas Longhorn Review. The time involved in producing the Great Texas Longhorn Review is one of its most amazing aspects. It went from the drawing board to amusement park attraction in only seven months. The people of Advanced Animation in Connecticut brought life to Goddard Productions ideas, taking scale-sized figurines and blowing them up to life-size, carving the characters in foam, forming the faces in fiberglass, installing the hardware that will bring the characters to life, sewing, painting, airbrushing, measuring, cutting, and finally, hauling them to Houston to build a one-of-a-kind entertainment for the entire family. We don't do these just for kids. This is not a kid's show. This is a show that works on many levels. One of them is for kids. The kids that were growing up in the 70s now have little ones, and they want, they want to enjoy something with their little kids. And I think these kind of attractions are the kind of attractions that the audience of all, all ages, they can enjoy. Now you know how these toe-tapping, two-stepping robots were created, so let's meet this menagerie. Called the Cow Palace Home. Now, folks, this here's a place with Texas hospitality. So when you feel the mood, <laughs> Slick Silver is the master of ceremonies, a pig with a pun for everything. The bum steers, with Tex glitter headlining on base, pick Texas's favorites with flair. The utter delights harmonize with style and scene since the Andrews sisters left the stage and screen. The lone armadillo is yesterday's hero gone soft, but he's still singing his song. And Fifi Lemieux weighs down a tune about as well as she does the piano. Buck Acorn has been riding the range too long and can't seem to find a friend. And where would any hoedown be without a penguin? A penguin? Yeah, well, they call him Tenderfoot Pete, and his is a sad tale. Overseeing this barnyard is an obnoxious pup named Gabby, who earned his name for a good reason. I like the little dog that came out of the, <laughs> out of the thing and said, yeah! <laughs> the big cow at the end, the one that played the guitar, the one that sang 
Blue Moon. Why did you like him the best? Because he has a real deep voice and he was wearing sunglasses and he has hair slipped back. Tenderfoot Pete, because I felt sorry for him. I like that uh, Blue Moon. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good rock tune several years ago. I think it's fantastic because it gives not only children but adults the same enjoyment. The Disney folks would call this audio animatronics, but the people at Gary Goddard Productions who were originally in the Disney fold are calling it animated theatronics. Whatever the name, either camp will tell you that the potential for this concept is limitless. Because of computers and uh, microtechnology and uh, all of these various things that come about because of the space program, uh, there are groups that can duplicate the kinds of things that Disney does in a much simpler fashion. I mean, nothing simple, but in a, a way that is economically feasible to groups outside of Disney. In five years, I hope we'll have character walking around on the stage. You know? He'll walk around, he'll welcome you to the show and walk off stage. And, and that's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. And I think there's a lot of ways that we can explore in using the theatronic process, not just as an entertainment process, but as a process to enlighten uh, ourselves and en enrich our everyday life. For those of you who would rather spin round and round or shake your insides on a Coney Island roller coaster, have no fear. We're going to always have thrill rides at Six Flags or at Ashed World, and we'll have probably a new thrill ride in the future. But this year, we're putting in the Great Texas Longhorn Review to broaden our family appeal. 